hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're going to be making some wooden spoons. Now when I say wooden spoons, I don't mean this kind of wooden spoons. We've already done that on the show. What I mean is this kind of wooden spoons. And what this is, is a percussion instrument that any age can play and it's a heck of a lot of fun. It all starts off with a block of maple and some layout. I'm going to be making these out of maple and I've already taken it over to the jointer. I have face jointed this to give it a perfectly flat surface and then I've edge jointed it to make this exactly at 90 degrees and perfectly flat. The next thing that we want to do is we want to take it over to the table saw and we're going to cut a blank that's going to be two inches by one and three quarter by nine inches long. Well, as is the case with many of my shows, because I'll probably be making multiples of this, we're going to be starting off with making a template. So I have a piece of quarter inch thick hardboard here. It is cut to the exact same dimensions as our piece. So nine inches long and one side is two inches wide to represent our two inch cut. And the other is one and three quarter wide. This project will be made with compound cutting, which I've shown you guys here on the show before. So therefore we need a profile for both the top and then the adjacent side. We're going to work on our top profile first, and that'll be our two inch wide piece. So we can put our one and three quarter inch piece aside and I've drawn a line lengthwise down the center here. And I'm going to come in from one end at two inches and just place a mark. And what we're going to do at that mark is we're going to draw a two inch diameter circle. We're now going to place a mark in from our edge here at half an inch. And then we're going to branch out here from that mark a quarter of an inch out from the center mark and we're going to join those marks to the outside edge or the outer edge of our two inch circle. Now measuring from our center line, we're going to place a mark on either side of it out five sixteenths of an inch. One right there and then another one right here. And what that will provide is a handle or a center uh, section that is five eighths of an inch wide. So we're going to duplicate those marks down here and then join our lines together to get our five eighths thickness. I've placed a mark in from the opposite end at a half an inch in from the end and on that line we're going to place or measure out from the center line one eighth of an inch from either side just like this. Then we're going to come along our outside edges and we're going to measure in one inch and once we get that one inch marking we can join our lines together. Well, the next thing that I want to do is I want to use a set of French curves to curve the body of this set of spoons in so that it has a better contour. And it's a little difficult with French curves to duplicate uh, the mark on both sides. So I'm just going to show you what I like to do. I'm just going to line this up here and I'm using some painter's tape. And all I'm going to do is mark the edge of my board here with the painter's tape. Just like that. And then once I get that edge done, I'm going to mark the outer edge of my board. So I'm just going to line it up again with that tape. Just like this. 
And once you get it lined up, just mark the other end of your board. And then what we can do is mark out the one pattern, just like that. And then when you're done, you can just flip this over and using your tape, align it with the edge of your board. You can see how that lines up just like that. And then we'll mark this one out. And that is the top profile marked out and we can turn our attention to the one and three quarter inch wide side profile. Well, the very first thing we're going to do is put a mark at the half inch mark at one end here. And then we're going to come in at one and three quarters and place another mark. We will then place a lengthwise mark all the way along at three sixteenths of an inch. And we'll do that on the opposite side as well. Now, because these profiles have to match front to back, because one is a side and one is a top, we need to duplicate our marks at the opposite end. And what we did for that was we had a mark that was a half an inch in from the end of the board and we also will mark our center line of our circle, which was at two inches in from the edge of the board. Well, now intersecting our center line for our circle going across lengthwise here, we want to place a mark on either side of our center mark that will be one eighth of an inch from center. In other words, that will give us a quarter inch gap in the middle here. I know it doesn't make much sense at the moment, but it will all come together. I promise it always does. Now out from our center line here at our two mark, uh, two inch mark in, we're going to place a mark on our lines here at a quarter of an inch out and that will give us a platform in the middle of half an inch. And then we're going to join this line here that we just made that measurement down to our tip just like that and again on the other side. And then on our outside line, we're going to measure out from that same center line at an inch and a half on both of our, on both sides. And then we're going to join those lines together with the ones that we measured just a moment ago. Now from this line here that we drew on this end, we're just going to use our French curves and our painter's tape method again. And we're just going to curve this line up to meet that line that is 3 16ths of an inch in. And then because we've placed the tape on there, we will be able to duplicate that line quite easily. And the very last step to marking this out will be to round off the back end. So all we're going to do is set our compass so that we can round this back end. It doesn't really matter the, the size. It's just basically to take the sharp edges off. So now that you have all this layout done, you just want to take it over to the scroll saw and very carefully cut out your templates. If you're not comfortable with that, cut it outside the line and sand up to the line afterwards. 
Well, if you followed along, you should have something that looks like this. And I did this one as an interior or inside cut just to keep the stability and be able to keep a solid template instead of having these ends being all floppy. So the first step that you want to take here is on your blank, you want to place a mark from either end at half an inch. And that, that mark is just marking the ends of your spoons. Um, it's basically scrap or off cuts. I like to leave a little extra and half an inch would be perfect for this project. So place that mark on both the two inch and the inch and three quarter side. And now lining up our template using those half inch marks that we just made, we're just going to trace around our templates. And if you'll notice, I drilled a hole in the center or the pivot point of our original circle that we drew on this side of the template. And we're just going to give that a mark with the awl because our next step in the process will be to drill a Forstner bit hole at that point on both sides of our blank. We'll now drill an inch and a half diameter Forstner bit hole three eighths of an inch deep into our blank. Well, the first cut that we're going to make will be our side profile, which is on our inch and three quarter wide side. We're not going to cut this back curve just yet. We want to keep it together as much as possible, but we're going to make a little cut in this way, a little cut in this way, just to get to the edge of where we need to be. And then we're going to very carefully come in and cut these pieces out. You want to save all of your off cuts because we need to put this thing back together when we're done cutting. Well, at this point, you should have something that looks just like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our off cut. We're going to place it back in our hole just like that. And we're going to put a little bit of packing tape around it just to hold it in place. Well, once you're happy with the amount of packing tape you've got on there and you're confident that it's going to hold together, you need to cut out the other side. So this was our first side. You will rotate it 90 degrees and we're going to start cutting the other side. So the first cut you want to make will be at this corner, taking that piece right off and then follow it with this piece. Once you're done that, we're going to come in with the blade following along our curve here all the way to the end and then stopping it just inside of this half inch trash section here or off cut. Don't cut it right off. Same thing with here. Come in here and stop it just past that half inch line. Once you get that done, we're going to rotate it back 90 degrees again. Everything will be held together in this scrap area and we're just going to follow through and cut this radius curve that we put there previously with our markup. And with your compound cutting done, it's just a matter of peeling away the pieces and getting your cut piece inside. We're going to be contouring this in with the drum sander and taking this down to much thinner than what it is, probably down to just below an eighth of an inch. Basically sand it and clean it up now. In order to assist me while sanding, I've taken one of the offcuts 
and I'll just sit my spoons on top of that so that it can sit flush as I sand the inside and trim this down to its final dimension. Well, as an afterthought, I think I'd like to trim off some more of the head of this to lessen the area that we're actually clicking together. It's quite a high-pitched sound that we're getting in this. I'll just show you here. It's very high-pitched, and I think that if we can remove some of that material on the head and reduce the amount of material that's actually connecting, it should lower that sound. So I've set my bandsaw table to 30 degrees. I'm spreading apart the jaws here, and I'm just going to trim off the corner of each one of these here. And with those corners cut off, we've essentially reduced the amount of area that's actually clacking together. And you can hear we have a much lower pitch than what we did before. And there you have it. Some wooden spoons for rhythm. Guys, what a fun little project. And that compound cutting really is a great way to make some pretty bizarre shaped things. And this is no different. Um, this, is, this is not my idea. I didn't come up with this. I actually found some in local music stores and thought what a fun idea to be able to make for the show. And you guys could probably bang these off in 20 minutes each. And what a great gift to give to somebody else's kids. I mean, they're a lot of fun. Who knows, by giving this to a child to play with, or even an adult for that matter, you may instill the rhythm in them that, who knows, you may inspire the next Neil Peart or even the next Buddy Rich. You never know uh, what you're going to inspire when you make someone a homemade gift. So guys, I hope you're going to give this a try yourself. Experiment with different types of wood. This is maple and it really sounds great, but who knows, walnut may have a different tone. I'm not really sure. Let me know in the comments below if you try that and if there is a difference. Guys, I want to thank you for joining me this week. This project has been a ton of fun. A uh, little loud, but loud is what I do. Guys, thanks for tuning in this week, and I hope you're going to join me next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.